nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Hey everyone, welcome to lecture 12. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about on-chip interconnects for optical telecommunication applications. And we're actually going to cover four key topics today. Uh, the first is going to be uh, guided wave interconnects uh, using uh, conventional fiber optic type structures and materials. And then the second uh, topic will be introducing the concept of photonic crystals. Uh, and then also some related technologies. The third topic is going to be applying photonic crystals to designing waveguides as potential alternative to uh, conventional fiber optic designs. And then finally, we'll be talking about photonic slabs and uh, holy fibers, which are alternatives uh, for uh, basically guiding light in 3D. Okay, so just to begin, um, so first of all, there are a number of uh, various coupler designs, but I'm mainly going to focus on contrasting and comparing fiber-based couplers, which we've talked about previously in the context of uh, various types of multi-core fibers, as well as uh, fused tapers and fused fibers, which are shown all at the bottom here, and then comparing those to integrated couplers, which are shown above. And you can see these integrated couplers, there are actually several types that are here, right? uh, such as a star coupler, which basically takes two or more inputs and then splits them evenly across multiple outputs, um, as well as uh, 3dB couplers and uh, other types of T couplers, which basically will split a signal into two or more arms. Okay. Um, and so if we look at on-chip interconnects, why would we want to do this instead of a fiber interconnect? Uh, so one of the biggest potential advantages of on-chip is that it's high speed. And there are actually a couple reasons for that. Because the form factor is much smaller than for a fiber, that means that it can be miniaturized quite a bit. Um, and so that, of course, leads to high densities. But furthermore, because uh, light is traveling through smaller distance, uh, then you can actually do it faster. And then you also have the advantage that uh, as you switch voltage, uh, the materials are going to be more sensitive to changes in voltage. So that also further accelerates the speed of switching. Uh, so now you can get into multiple gigahertz or above. Um, and then also as a result of kind of these miniaturization of components, you can use much less power than a lot of other uh, types of designs. And so this is just showing uh, what happens if you basically go from a fiber-based design up here to uh, essentially either free space or on-chip type interconnect structure. And so the advantage is basically you have like a much simpler uh, design and it can be further miniaturized as opposed to like a large number of fibers. And uh, the last advantage of on-chip uh, designs potentially is also uh, improve manufacturability because uh, basically uh, connecting large number of fibers can be very labor intensive, whereas on chip interconnects could be all manufactured together. Okay, so let me show you uh, some examples. Uh, so, first of all, you can have interconnects between different chips. Uh, so, that's basically shown above here. And so, what's happening is you have basically uh, the electronics of the circuit, so these might be uh, chips that are uh, regulating uh, wireless communications or potentially uh, wired communications like Ethernet. And then this is immediately adjacent to an opt optoelectronic chip. So this enables you to take the signal that's being received over uh, Ethernet or Wi-Fi and then actually translate that into optoelectronic uh, modulation, which can then be used to drive a, a laser system and then uh, consequently couple into waveguide. And so then this waveguide uh, basically is all built on the chip. Uh, and so typically the way that you design these chips is you would uh, assemble uh, some of these chips basically using a conventional CMOS process. You'd have a separate process to make uh, the other components like the optoelectronics, like the laser, and then you would assemble them using uh, flip chip packaging. Okay, so if you do something like that, 
what that allows you to have is a, a maximal amount of flexibility in terms of the materials and the, uh, the layout of the structure. Um, and so this is particularly uh, uh, important because it's projected to be a major uh, approach to solving problems with data center bandwidth. Um, as you may know, uh, bandwidth in uh, data centers is limited by uh, a lot of the communication protocols that are being used, but data centers are very uh, basically bandwidth intensive, like both externally with respect to uh, remote users, but also internally with respect to exchange of information across the servers. Uh, so in order to be able to uh, accommodate needs for increased bandwidth and decreased latency, uh, these chip-to-chip -chip interconnects are viewed as a major path forward. And IBM has already moved towards commercialization of this type of technology. Another type of technology that is not as far along in terms of commercialization, but also is interesting is this external reflection hologram based approach, where essentially you would have a, a bunch of silicon chips and uh, optoelectronic or 3.5 type chips. And then these are actually being connected uh, via holograms to one another. So as opposed to using waveguides, the holograms are basically uh, creating the waveguiding. And so the potential advantage of this is now you can actually easily reconfigure this by changing the hologram. And there are a lot of strategies to do that, uh, such as uh, lithium niobate uh, voltage-based tuning. Um, and so this flip chip bonding that I mentioned earlier, let me just show you in a little more detail how this works. So uh, basically what's happening is you're making a silicon CMOS chip, which is shown on the bottom. And then this silicon CMOS chip is actually being connected to a multi multiple uh, quantum well structure, which might be made out of algas uh, in like maybe 1.3 to 1.5 microns, or in shorter wavelengths might be connected to something like indium phosphide. So that's shown here. And uh, this can be uh, essentially using uh, predominantly silicon parts for the passive components and then uh, these 3.5 materials for the active components, such as the lasers and sometimes the detectors as well. Although the detectors can also be made from germanium, which is uh, usually considered CMOS compatible.